and the, you are supposed to go there and then you view what is there. So we are going to share with you that in a, a message in our chat, and then you'll be able to access all those different items. Uh, do we copy the notes as we teach? Uh, no, sometimes some things you have to write them as I go on with the teaching. Uh, while more other detailed notes, you can do this a bit of you know, sketch, sketch bit of it, but the organized notes, I always upload them in the Google Classroom and then you can always uh, get them. But when we are working out, we all know that with mathematics, we don't just sit and listen, but we work out. So wherever you are, please, you make sure you have the required tool for a math lesson. So when you do have, then at the end of it all, I prepare all these notes here and then send them to you and you write them in the, the most organized way. Okay, so try to take note of that as we get started. All right, it's always our norm and culture that we always start with the word of prayer. And uh, this prayer helps us to put this lesson into God's hands and then we move on. Do I have someone who has just joined in to give us a word of prayer if you're new today? Can you be able to give us, if you're new, we're very sure that it's your very first time. Okay, I've not heard about Jose. Rita has been here, I think. Uh, Isingoma has been here. Alom Martha has been here. Maybe uh, Jose Maria. Hey, Jose Maria, she's gone over. Huh? Okay, okay, okay. I have so many people. Yes, Isingoma Emma. Maybe let's pick on Isingoma. Hey, whoever I'm calling is disappearing. Eh? <laughs> Okay, um, who, who, who is new here? Now, usually when your devices are not well named, I find it difficult to call you by the name of the device. Huh? Okay, let me call on Rita, Rita. Okay, which Rita? We have Rita, I have two Ritas here. Rita Z, the one with the S. Could you open us to the word of prayer? Yes, pray. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this lesson. Lord, may you please guide us as we are going to learn so that we understand each and everything that a teacher is going to teach. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rita, for the prayer. And I uh, pray that God guides us through as we do the studies. Okay, all right, um, let's now turn our focus here. Um, I think uh, we can all be able to see our screen. Okay, so uh, those of you who are just joining us, as you can see on our screen, what you see there are these our sponsors that we providing us through into this lesson. So we hope that we, we still pray that God continues providing for them. All right, now, uh, <clears throat> those of you who've just joined, uh, just to, for a recap, we have been looking at, uh, okay, um, Isaiah, your hand is up. I don't know, I hope you have some issue, Isaiah. Yes, Isaiah. Oh, oh, your network is not good, Isaiah? Okay, okay. Maybe when you get a clear network, you'll be able to speak to us, huh? Okay. It's working well. Okay, so uh, we are back here. So we are saying that... Um, this is what we've been looking at, those of you who are joining us. We've been looking at a collecting of data, collection of data. That's what we started on last week. Okay. Okay. The, actually, the other week, uh, two weeks ago, we are looking at collection of data. Now, in the collection of data, 
we said that uh, when we are collecting data, there are certain things that we keep in mind. Reason, we saw reasons as to why we collect data, okay? And we said the key issue when we are collecting data is something that we call the hypothesis. We collect data so that we can, we can carry out what you call a hypothesis. Okay, and we said a hypothesis is an idea that you would like to investigate about, okay, to find out if it is true or if it's not true. We say that is what an, a hypothesis was. So before you think about going to pick data out there, there must be an objective or the reason as to why you are picking up that given data. Okay, so that is the whole idea that you need to find out, is this true or it is false? Okay, you may be there saying, uh, many people, many students, many, many students go to school. So you need to find out, is it true that many students go to school? So then you go to every school and find out, or every village and find out how many are in the school. Then from the statistics, from the data that you collect, you can now find out whether whatever you've been collecting is true or it is false, okay? You may say, you may have, uh, people may keep on saying that, oh, many people have cars these days, okay? Now for you, your work will be going out there to find out the population which is having cars, okay? You may say, okay, if people are saying they have cars, then, let me also find out those with bicycles, those with motorcycles and so on. So the data that you come up with will be able to tell you that yes, it is true, people have vehicles or they do not have, okay? We've seen cases like, let me give a live example. We are in a COVID pandemic. Now, if you need to find out the, the ministry, what the Ministry of Health does, it goes out there, it has people who go out there in the community to find out the statistics, find out how many people are having, um, how many people are having the what? Are having the virus. So they keep on moving house to house. They keep on asking. They move from one health center to another who has come with cough, who has come with flu. So the data that we shall be given, they will tell you now today we think uh, 1,000 people are having COVID. It is not something they assume, but they have gone out there in different hospitals, in different institutions, and then carried out that, that to find out if it is really true or it is false. So this topic here helps us to do that. How do we collect that data? And how do we really find out that what we are going to look out for is true or it is false? So. Our keyword here, as we keep working through, is hypothesis. That is our keyword that we keep on uh, working through. Okay, so we say that in a hypothesis, we always form what we call a question. Okay, we always form a question. Now, we said also that when we are to collect data, we come up with uh, four major items. One, the first thing we come up with what you call a frequency table, which we generated in the last time. And we say the frequency table has the name of the item, it has the tally, and it also has what you call the frequency. Okay, so you generate your table in this given what? In this given form. I know when we keep looking, when we keep advancing to different classes, we shall keep adding on other things this other side. But for now, what we should be knowing, basically, if you are finding out that the first thing is this table here that you really have to generate, okay? So this is what we do have. So that's the very first thing that we, we come up with, which we did in the last lesson. We are going to review the exercise I gave you last time. Eh? Then the other second thing that we do after we use this table here to come up with what we call a pictograph. 
Okay, let me answer some questions here. Pretty, your hand is up. Yes, Pretty. I would like to know the difference between a pictogram and a pictograph. They are the same things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, Isaiah. Isaiah? Isaiah? Okay. Uh, yes, Jose Maria? Jose, yes, speak to us. Okay, so uh, dear members, I request that let's not put up our hands if we do not have uh, something to, because I always pay close attention to people who are burning issues and I have to always to attend to them. Eh? So when you keep raising up your hand, I must hear from you, okay? Don't raise up your hand. Like he, Oppo is raising up the hand and he's not talking, yeah? All right, please don't raise up your hand if you do not have anything to say. Just listen and uh, we move on. All right, now um, we are saying that um, our frequency table has that, okay? Okay, so we have the picture pictograph that we came up with. We said the pictograph is basically a pictorial representation, okay? If they are asking about clubs that are playing football, literally you can use a ball to represent that, okay? So when you put, when we say that maybe these two balls here are representing maybe 20 or one ball is representing, one ball can represent 10, 10 clubs. So once you put two balls, it means this was the equivalent what to 20. Now, when you do this, you're representing a, you're doing what you call the, the pictogram, okay? So usually in data collection, we try to come up with these, with these, these pictures here that represent that given item, and then you can easily see that. So this is what we did in our last lesson. So in our last lesson, we came up with frequency tables, and we also came up with the picto graphs. Now, uh, I want to first look at the, the, the other assignment I gave you in a previous in, in our previous lesson. There is an assignment I gave you, and we are going to base on that to be able to come up with it. Uh, what today we are going to look at basically bar charts and also pi charts. These are the ones we are going to look at for today. So we are going to see how do we, based on the information, remember we are still continuing, we are still collecting data and you, you're still coming up with a final, with a final item. So we are still here, we've got it, our frequency table, we've created a pictograph. Now the last, the last two things we are doing, we are coming up with a bar chart and also a pi chart. After that, we shall now carry on a conclusion, okay? We shall now get a conclusion, we shall now conclude, and then we know from what we have. Now, just for a recap, I hope we have our data that we collected last time. I gave you an assignment say, uh, asking you to, uh, to, to, to collect data to find out the best team in Europe. Yeah, this is what I say. To find out the best team in Europe in your neighborhood. Okay? The best team in Europe in your neighborhood. In Europe at home. Let me use at home or around home. You may not ask only two people. So this is what we had. We needed to find out. And we had the list of clubs that were there. Now I want someone to give us his or her data that he found out. Huh? I want someone to give us his or her data that you found out. If she did the assignment, those of you who did the, the, the assignment, 
Lauren and Diana. Lauren and Diana. Yes, teacher. You're giving us your data that you collected. The football teams, Arsenal, mm. number of mm. people, five. Ah, first, first list, this first list them. Arsenal. You had Arsenal. Uh -huh. Manchester United. You had Manchester United. Uh -huh. Barcelona. You had Barcelona. Liverpool. Uh -huh. You had Liverpool. These are the ones, eh? Yes. Uh -huh. So our frequency table had the name, which is the name of the team. We have tally, and then we had the frequency. Okay. Then we draw our lines here, like this. Draw our lines. To separate this. I know you have more straight lines, so make sure you come up with the better lines than what you see here. Okay, uh, I'm trying to draw my table here. Two, three. And that. Okay, so we had the, our teams here. Those of you who have just joined in, this is what we did in our previous lesson. There was an assignment which was given, and the, we had the, we're supposed to find out uh -huh, the best team. Among us, these ones here, not the ones that you know, and then Liverpool. Okay, so uh, back to you, Laura. Uh huh. Give us the tally that you had. As you had five, had five. So you draw your five sticks here. Uh huh. Manchester had eight, had eight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Uh huh. Barcelona four. Had four, two, three, four. Uh -huh. Liverpool. Three. Had three. Three. Uh -huh. So when we do this, our tally here will be, this one we put five. Then here we put eight. Then here we put four. Here we put three. What was your total number? Laura, what was your total number? You're still Laurie. Hey, Laurie, we are still with us. Total frequency. Okay, Laurie has gone. Okay, um, Jetham. Jetham. Jotham? We need to find out the total frequency here. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Someone tell us the total here, the total frequency that we have here. Our total. Um, yes, Favor. Twenty. Here we have our total as 20. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, dear members, uh, this, is a, this is what we do have. Okay. Okay. This is what we have as our frequency table. So, when you are coming up with your work, the first thing, this is your frequency your frequency table. We come out, it is very simple. It's a very simple table. So from out there, you went, this is Lauren and uh, went out there and then asked members, uh -huh, which team? He tell you this, which team? He tell you this. So you keep on 
generating those studies. And this is what we did in our previous class. Okay. Now, after that, uh -huh. after this, the next thing we always do is to generate uh, what we call the, 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 the pictograph from this point here. Okay. From here, we will generate our, we will generate our pictograph. And we say with the pictograph, you get those, we, we always get uh, a key in most cases, okay? And that key is the one going to represent what? It is the one going to represent the, the, represent the items there. You may put it in whatever form, okay? So uh, take an example here, I can say, if I am representing my, my, my balls, my items here, of course the teams can be represented by a ball, uh, you can any picture, but as long as it is related to what to what you're talking about. Here I may say that for 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 my first team, which is as you know, I can use the first the, 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 the my first team here is as you know, okay. But you can generate a key so that you don't draw so many balls, okay. Generate a key whereby you do not generate you not get so many of them. But you can, when you get a certain key, you can easily know that. What if one ball can represent five? Okay, then from there you can easily tell from what you are having. All right. Um, I'm seeing some hands up, Alvin. Alvin. I wanted to add up on my, I wanted to also do my, my research, but it's okay. Okay, you wanted to add on your research. Okay, now members, uh, let's keep our research near, next to each other. Let's keep there. We are going to keep on uh, picking up from that point. Eh? So don't worry, just keep them near you, okay? Just keep them near you. We shall be able to uh, work on them, okay? Now, uh, what I wanted from here, after that, you, we say you generate what you call a what? A pictograph. So we can say, maybe you can say two balls can represent, maybe one, one ball can represent two, okay? Or we can say one ball can represent this in whatever form, but we say, here, let me, let's take an example. Here, I'm going to use one ball to represent two. Okay, two people, those are two people. So meaning for Arsenal, the first one here, I will have uh, for Arsenal, how many balls will I draw for Arsenal? I will have to draw one ball, two, so these are now four, these are now four. The other one, I will draw a half, okay? I will draw a half a ball. This one shows that, this is one, one person here. So this is equivalent to what? To five. So what does this mean? It means that this is two, two, one, which is equal to, uh, this is, is equal to, which is equal to five, okay? Which is equivalent to what? To five, okay? So the one, you see that the one, I'm keeping it in a half form, okay? I keep it in half form. Now, who can give us for, 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 for Manchester? Uh -huh. For Manchester, how many balls are we drawing? Uh, I have so many readers today. Rita Namakula. Teacher, I'm Ruth. I have a question. Uh, yes, yes, Ruth. Yes. On the tallies, the section. Mm. The section for the tallies. I see mm. on Arsenal, she said five, we drew four. Then on Manchester, oh, she said eight. But on that, yes. On oh, this part of the five, five. Okay. Instead, they are five, true. Uh-huh. Then these ones are five, six, seven, eight. 
Why don't you do what? Yes, I'm saying. You, you why... can tie. It is okay. I... You can tie them. It's okay. It's okay. You can okay. tie them. No problem. So for the balls, we draw four balls. Uh huh. We draw how many? For Manchester, we draw four. We draw four. Okay. One, two, three, four. This is equal to how many? Eight. This is equal to eight. Okay, thank you. Aha, uh -huh. so we move to the next team. We move to the next one. Aha, uh -huh. so we have again Barcelona. Aha, uh -huh. how many shall we draw? Um, yes, Michibi Rodney. Uh, we shall draw two balls, teacher. We shall draw two. One, two. So what's the total here? It's four. Which is four. Thank you. Good. Uh -huh. So we move on. Uh, the last one. Uh, the last one is Liverpool. How many are we drawing? For Liverpool, how many are we drawing? Uh, yes. Um, Jotham. Yes, Jotham. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. How many are we drawing? On Liverpool, mm. we are drawing one and a half. We are drawing one and a half. Eh? Yes. Uh -huh. So this will be equal to? Three. This will be equal to three. Good. OK. So this is how we generate our pictograph okay so you, you just get a key depending on the results that you are having depending on the results that you are having so at the end of it all you will see that someone will look at these balls here and easily tell that okay whenever i say four it was a each ball is representing two now the other thing that we move on to uh sorry 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 uh the other thing that we are going on to or that we are working on to is the bar graph, okay? From what we have generated here, we generate what we call the what? The bar graph, okay? That's the next one. We generate a bar graph. Now, this bar graph, now all that we are doing all that we are doing, uh, okay, all that we are doing here is to try to put this information in the smallest term possible so that we generate the what? We generate our work. Now, with the bar graph, let's get back to our notes here. Let's get back to our notes here. Now, with the bar graph, what is supposed to be inside there? That is the other thing that we have. What is supposed to be in our bar graph? Let's, read, let's check here. Uh, let's first get back to our notes here. Uh, for our bar graph. Okay. So we've looked at the frequency tables and the items that are supposed to be there, which I've tried to mention. I've also talked about the pictograph, which we now very well know. And um, now this is where we are for the bar graph. Now we are saying, uh, someone's asking, why did we get that one goal is represented by two? We are picking from our information that we have generated. We are picking from the statistics we have. I told you, you can use any scale which is suitable. You cannot say one ball is representing three and yet you cannot represent their half ball at some point. So try as much as you can, when you are doing the representation, you put the right key when you are putting up that. So when we talk about the bar graph, we say that we can always represent our information to show how something changes over time or to compare items, okay? We use bar graphs to compare items. They have an 
axis, okay? This is X axis, okay? And the Y axis, which is vertical, and the Y axis. These are the two things that are there, okay? So take note of that. And of course, you have your title, which is there to show what you're showing. But literally with the bar graph, this is what we are representing. Here you can put the items and then the numbers at the top. Okay, that's what we do have. So in so doing, when you represent this, you can look at these bars. You can easily tell that the highest one, you can also know the lowest one, okay? And you can also know which one is on the same level. Okay, so that's what we are seeing as the backgrounds. Let's generate one here from our data. Please use your data there now, okay? Now use your data that you are having. Check your data that you have. Yes, Farida, your hand is up. Farida? Pardon? Network is down. But we are getting you. You're not hearing me. Okay, I know some people see network is always on and off. Eh? Hey, we understand that. Eh? So don't see, don't have any. But as I said earlier on, that our YouTube channel will be there, okay? And that channel is the one which will help us to review the, that entire work that we are having, yeah? Uh, yes, Hazel? Hazel? I can't see the screen. Okay, um, Chimera? Yes, Chimera. What, what key should, should one use? We use the key, the one you have used in your pictograph. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, yes, uh, Patrick. Patrick? What's the question? What's the question? Uh, yes, Patrick. What's the question? Okay. Yes, Angel? Chef, for me, I wanted to say that when we are when we are using this y axis and the x axis mm. then how should you know that this is the x axis and this is the y axis now usually the items are on the x axis huh? the names are on yeah. the x axis okay and the numbers yeah. are on the y axis yes yes that's how the bar graphs are the items here if you yes. have names of people or names of items names of what you put them on the x-axis. The y-axis, okay. you put the numbers up there. Yes, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Uh, finally, uh, Opoi. Okay. Opoi has had the network issues today. I don't know why. Okay. So uh, dear members, we are back here. So as we conclude, so we are saying that we are now going to use our, uh, the scale that we use, someone was asking about the scale, is the same scale you use in the histograph, sorry, in the pictograph, is the same scale that you're going to use for the what? For the bar charts, okay? That's what you're going to use. So let's get to our, I know some of you get your graphs, get your, you are, and you come up, we come up with the graphs. So to come up with the graphs, I'm going to sketch one here. I know you can come up with better graphs, but I'm going to sketch, just a sketch. Eh? I know you have, uh, you have rollers there and you can draw better graphs there. 
So I have this. Okay, we are drawing together. Those of you who are there, then I will also have this one here. So these are the two items we start with, the X axis and then the Y axis, okay? This is my Y axis and this is my X axis, okay? These are the two that we have. Please do these labels here. Now, our, our scale that we are using is one, we are using two, eh? so meaning this is our zero point here. This is our zero point. So zero, okay, you can even put one, two, three, four, and so on, eh? but this is the one that we have used the other side of one ball representing, representing two. So we can say uh, we have two, we have four, we have six, we have eight, we have 10, okay? Please, uh, I know you, you, when you it is always better that you get your graph books, eh? and the, when you get the graph books, you can even do a better representation because those graph books, they have those lines well labeled out there, okay? So it's better that you use that, okay? So after that, you now start putting up the bars. So we start with the first team, Arsenal. Arsenal has five. Okay, Arsenal has five. So we go and look for where our five is on our chart. I'm going to use the different colors here. Arsenal has five. So my five is around here. My five is here. Okay. So I'll uh, my five is here. So I'll draw a line there. I'll draw my line there. Okay. And then this is my box, like that, okay? And remember you give it a label as what? As Arsenal, give it a name afterwards. So this will be what? This will be Arsenal, okay? You give it a name like that. So meaning this bar is representing what? Is representing Arsenal. That's the first one. Now, sometimes you can join these bars together or you can like, there, there are other ways, there are different ways you can draw it. Eh? You can join the bars, you can decide to join the bars together, okay? So that you one to the other, one to the other like that. You can also try to put them separately on their own as well, okay? So we can join, we can also put them separated as well. Uh-huh, so this is what I have as my first one. Then I go to the next team. Manchester is having eight. So I look for where eight is. Eight is up here. So let's just join them. Let's try to use the joining method. So we go and draw the one for the next team. Uh -huh. The next team is here. So I'll draw my line uh, from here up to there. Okay, this is eight. Then I draw my bar and take it to that. Okay, so I also label my team here. This is my team. This will be the Manchester team. So I can put here uh, Manchester. Please, I hope we are doing together. Check also in your group. I know some of you have even already done it, finished it, okay? Okay, then you go to the next one. Move to the next team. Barcelona has four. Okay, Barcelona has four. So we go to Barcelona. The next one is Barcelona has four. My four is here. So I go and draw my line also from here. This is four. Uh, then I come up with it. my bar here. So this one will be my label there as Barcelona is labeled that one. So you realize that at the end of it all, your graphic should be coming up very well labeled. You see the bars are keeping on are moving in order, okay? Then the last one that I'm having here is Liverpool with three. 
So with Liverpool, I'm having three here. So my three is here, okay? So I'll come and also do the same thing. I draw my line for Liverpool here. Uh -huh. Then I put it right there. Okay. So then I put my label here and I call this one Liverpool. Hey, remember we, we didn't label our, our item. This one is the number of people labeling our axis, this is number of people. These ones are what? Teams. We can call them European, European teams, okay? That's what we are having. We have European teams and you also have the number of what? The number of people. So at the end of it all, you can see that you can even tell, someone can now automatically tell which one is the, which team has the highest number of people as we are seeing there. Okay, so in so doing, let me reduce my, uh, we had gone a bit too far. Let me put it up to somewhere here. Okay, maybe let me leave it here. So at the end of it all, you'll see that uh, this is uh, the X axis. You realize that as you draw those bars, you can easily tell who has the highest, who has the, the lowest, okay? All right, um, I have some hands up. Tukashawe Deniva. Deniva? I think bars are not supposed to be attached, but I... Hey, you disappeared. So I say, we can attach the bars, you can also put them separate, okay? We can put them separate. We can put them as well uh, at different. Some people are going, I can draw it in this way. Some people can draw it like this. Uh, let's, let, me also, let, me, let me indicate this one here, the other way. Okay. Let me show you the other way. So in the other way, some people can also put them separately. And we have something like this. So the, our first team was five. So I have my five here. I have my five here. I draw my line here for Arsenal. This is Arsenal has five. Then for Manchester, eight. So we can also have the eight here. Okay. We can also have the eight this other side. like this, then for Barcelona, it was four. So we can also have for Barcelona here. We can also have for Barcelona here. And the last one was Liverpool with three. Uh, Liverpool with three in that form, okay? So we could, be, we could have this as well. So, at the end of it all, you're seeing that the bars are trying, uh, are still showing us that this one has the highest, this one has the lowest, this one has the other one as well, okay? All right, so um, uh, th this is a, uh, of course we can cut off, we can make sure that this one is maybe reduced a bit. Uh, let me, okay, let me cut off the whole thing. But please don't stretch your, your, your line. You can stop up to around here to show that it's not, stretching there is some gap that is a lot of gaps that are there but i know you can draw yours far far much clearer than than this one here okay all right so this please uh, something that you should not leave out is labeling your uh, your your axis this is these are european teams against the number of people okay the teams against the number of the number of people these are the things that you shouldn't leave out okay and also labeling each one here to show that everyone has a name here, okay? To show that everyone is here with a given item here as well. Let me answer two or three questions. Um, Sadiq? Master. Master, yes, what Sadiq. I'm asking 
Mansa, what I'm asking is that don't we share the bug the buzz? Yes, you can shade. You have you can shade. You have to shade. Okay. The shading part is also there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Master. Hey, you're welcome. This is a this was a bit of a rough sketch, but I know you can also uh, uh try to bring up a clear one there yeah, as well. Um, yes, Hanzo. Hanzo? Teacher. Teacher. Yes, please. I can't see the screen. First, you log out and then get back in. Eh? Log out and then log in again. Okay, yes, Nina. Excuse me, teacher. How do we access your YouTube channel? We are going to send you that link. Don't worry. Uh, yes, Chimera. Chimera. Do we have to put a title? Yes, it must be there. A background showing it. Number of people supporting the European teams or something. The title must be there. Uh huh. Um, Fidium. Oh, me, I have not joined the WhatsApp group. Can you help me, please? Okay. Hey, people are not paying attention here. Okay. Uh, finally, Laura. Lauren. How do I hand in work? All right. We, we are going to answer all those things at the end of it all. Eh? Don't worry. Now, uh, finally, when you're done with the back graph, the other thing that we come up with is the, the pie chart. I, I want to look at the pie chart, finally. The pie chart. Okay. Now, when we have when we come up with a pie chart, we're here. So the next thing that we come up with are the pie charts. Now, the pie charts usually are circular statistical graphics that divide into different sectors. Like you divide, you're drawing a circle and then you're dividing it into different sectors. And those sectors, they try to show you a percentage of people, okay? They always show you a given percentage that they give this percentage takes on this, this percentage takes on this, or this uh, sector takes on this other number of people. So, uh, for example, if we have our, if we have our teams that we already come up with, we have to generate our what? We have to generate what we call that uh, pie chat, okay? We have to generate what we call the pie chat. Now, coming up with the pie chat, we need to do some calculations first. You need to do, this one I'm going to give it to you to, to do it. Eh? We first have to do some calculations first. Now, which calculations are we doing here? We first need to do calculations first. Now, remember, remember we, we have our numbers. We say we have already, uh, if you take a statistic, Acedo has five, uh, Manchester, Manchester has eight, uh, Barcelona, Barcelona, Barcelona has four, and then Liverpool, has three, okay? These are the statistics that we have. Now, how would we put these ones on the pie chart, okay? And our total is, our total is 20. People said, was it 20? This is 12, yes, 12 plus eight. Our total is what? Is 20, okay? Now, this is what you do. If you're to represent on a pie chart, step one, take note of our circle, has a total number of degrees of 360 degrees. Okay, that's the first thing we need to know. Our circle has a total of 360 
degrees. Now, we need to divide, to divide the 360 degrees to div these different clubs here. We need to give them, each of them, a certain percentage of this 360. So what do we do? First of all, you first find out what each sector is supposed to take. There are two methods, eh? and there is that method of saying, um, five if for example it's for arsenal if we get for arsenal okay if we want to find out the sector for arsenal we get five out of this total here which is 20 times the 300 and what 360 then we get the sector that you have there okay what do we get here what percentage do we get here by typing type the answer what do we have what answer do we have here Five divided by 20 times 360. Uh-huh. Those of us with working with the calculators, what do we have? Uh oh, okay, we have 90. Okay. Here we have 90 degrees. Okay. 90 degrees. So this is what we have. This is the arsenal we'll take on 90 degrees. Then we move on to the another, another one. So when we take on <coughs> for Manchester, we shall have eight out of 20 times 360 degrees. What will this one be? What's for Manchester? Um, what, what, what do we have? I'm seeing 144. Do you all have that? 144? Uh-huh, we have 144 degrees, okay? Then we go to the next one, to so Barcelona. Now, Barcelona will have a four out of 20 times 360. What will this one be? Uh, do we have 70? 72? 72 degrees, okay? Good. Then finally, we have Liverpool. Uh -huh. We have Liverpool. This one we shall be having three out of 20 times 360. These are degrees. What we shall we have here for Liverpool? Uh, we have 36, 36 degrees. Do we have, all have 36? Please confirm this 36. Um, Chibi says it's 36, uh, Rita also has got the same thing, and so on. So this, these are the different percentages that we have that we are going to represent. Now, you realize that when you total up this 90 plus 144 plus 72 plus 36, you should be able to come up with 360, 360 degrees, OK? Alternatively, or oh, another thing that you can do, uh, alternatively, you can say you divide 360 divide by 20. When you divide by 20, it means that what if these 20 people, what sector will each of them take, is supposed to take? When you get 360 divided by 20, what do you get? 360 divided by 20, what do you get? Uh-huh. 360 divided by 20, what do you get? 18, okay? Is it 18 or 12? 18, okay? Now, this 18 means that every, of these 20 people, everyone is supposed to take 18, okay? So we start for each club. For Arsenal, we shall now multiply, which Arsenal has what? Has five. We multiply five times the what? Five times 18. What is five times 18? Five times 18 should be able to get 90. Uh -huh. Then you get for Manchester also. Manchester will be eight times 18, which should be able to get 144 degrees. You move to, so at the end of these two methods will still give you the same thing. You come to Barcelona, 
Barcelona will be four times 18, which will also get, uh, was it 72 degrees? Then you get for Liverpool, Liverpool will be three times 18, which is 36 degrees. So this is the same as what we have got earlier on. Okay, it will be the same as what we have got earlier on. Okay, so I, I think we've seen this. So at the end of it all, you'll see that you will come up with the same. So whatever the method, either you use this one or the upper one, you'll come up with the same same thing. Now, the trouble, the, the other thing that we have to do is to draw the sectors. Okay, the last thing that we have to do is to draw the what? The sectors. So what do you do when you're drawing these sectors here? Get your, let's look here. Uh, I hope we are seeing the screen. Uh, let me, can we be able to see the screen? Hey, Liverpool is 54. Okay, 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 okay. I'm seeing people say that we have Liverpool is 54. Liverpool is 54. Okay. Uh, not 36. Eh? This is a three times 18. It is 54. Okay, this is 54 degrees. Not 18. Eh? Okay, good. Not 36. Good. Uh huh. Now, finally, we are saying, uh, are we able to see my screen? Are you seeing my screen? Uh, are you seeing the ruler? This other screen I'm on. Uh, please confirm to me that you are seeing. Are you seeing my screen again? Good. Are you seeing my ruler? I think you're seeing my ruler. Now, good. So this is what you're going to do. I'm going to, I'm just giving you an idea. Get a portrait, this is a compass. I think you call it the compass. Huh? Get a compass. I hope you are seeing my compass. Let me ask someone here. Um, Ruth. Ruth. Yes, teacher. Are you seeing my compass and the ruler? No. You're not seeing the compass and the ruler. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let me put it there. Uh, Uh -huh. We are now seeing, yeah? are you now seeing my compass and the ruler? Uh, let me ask someone here, uh, Michivi, Rodney? Yeah. Yes, please, teacher. You're seeing my compass and the ruler now? Yes, teacher. Good. Now, what you do, get your compass and your ruler. This is my compass that I'm having. I, I know for you have better compasses. Eh? Get your compass here. You, you have three items you're going to use. You have the compass, the ruler, and, and the protractor, okay? These are the three things that we are going to use to come up with our, to come up with our square. So the, this one here, the compass is going to help you to draw the circle. Okay, this is my circle. Okay, it's a bit so big. This is my circle. Uh-huh. This is my circle. It's quite a bit so big. Let me let me try to remove reduce it. Let's try to reduce it. Okay, let me put it here. So this is this is my circle. I think it's now clear. So you first draw that circle there. Okay. Now, after drawing your circle, I you're going to come up with your things clearly. So after getting your circle, you come and start measuring your degrees. You get your circle. Please, we are measuring from this middle point here. Okay? Take note that you are measuring from this point. Let me stretch my, let me stretch my compass. Look here. Uh -huh. This is what I'm having. Yeah? Good. So when you put it here, you start looking. Now, remember these degrees are in two forms. We have this one starting from this side 
And we also have the other starting from this side. When you decide to start from this side, continue with this other side, okay? When you decide to start from this way, look at this one. We have the inner one, okay? We have this inner scale and also we have the outer. We have the outer scale, okay? So the first person is Asino. Asino has 90 degrees. So you come and measure off 90 from here. Let me measure my, let me pick off 90 from my point here. Uh, let me put my 90 here. You measure off your 90. So this is your 90 here. So you first measure it off, first label it somewhere up here. So I've labeled it there, okay? This, remember your center is there. So you come and label it off here and then you come and get your, come and get your what? Come and get your ruler and you draw that line there, okay? Come get your ruler. This is my ruler. Come pick on your ruler. Uh, let me get the ruler here. So from that point that you have marked off up to this middle point here, okay? Up to the middle point, should be able to measure to 90. So then you draw your line from here up to this other side. So you start drawing your line from here. I will draw my line. Hope you can, can be able to. I know for you can draw perfect lines. Yeah, I trust your lines, perfect lines to that, okay? Then I also have, uh, I'm also having uh, something like this. I'm also having this. I also rotate it here and then I label through. Uh, I also label, I try to draw this line here also from the 90 mark, okay? I also draw the 90 mark from this point here. So from here, I will have to draw off the 90 to this point here. So you will see that now Asino will have to take on this one here. This will be now 90, okay? This will be now my 90 degrees and this will be now the Asino part of it. This will be Asino. So I mark off this, this will be 90. This will be 90 degrees, and I call this one what? I call this ascent. okay? Now, I know you can draw more. So from here, you bring your protractor now. We remember, we remember the scale that we're using, meaning we are moving this other side. So you bring it here now. We are concluding. I know you're going to complete it. So you come and bring it here, bring your protractor. Now, this other side where you stopped, from where you drew the 90 mark from, okay, from this point here. The next one, we are marking off 144. So you move until you label your 144, somewhere here, okay? You label your 144, from here, this is 140, 45 from somewhere here. So I mark it off at that point there. So from there, I bring my ruler and then I draw and so on and so forth. I, I know because of time, we may not finish up the entire thing, but I know you can try to complete it up. So you, you realize that your sectors will be having uh, every, uh, you'll be having your other points there. So this is, that's how you end up coming up with your, with your pie chart. Now, I want you, my assignment to you is to complete up that pie chart. And you also draw for me the, the, the bar graph the, for the other data that you collected, okay? Okay, the, 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 the other one that you collected, the data that you collected, you're going to use, you're going to come up with the information. So you're going to add on the bar graph and also the pie chart from the other data that you collected. And they're the ones that you're going to, uh, and in those of you who have just joined, you will just have to collect data afresh and then you will continue from there. Let me answer some questions before we close. Julia. Edify. Yes, Edify, your hand is up. Okay. 
Okay. Um, Alvin? I would like to know where can I find that assignment? Can we do it here? Oh, like we have to do it somewhere and then collect it and then we will mark it. Uh, we are going to give you those procedures finally on that. Eh? Don't worry about the assignment. Yes, Rita. Teacher, for me, my concern is on this pie chart. There is a problem because when you add 72 to 90 to 54 to 144 and then to yes and then yes they do not add up 72 you said, you said it is what 90 uh-huh and 150 154 it is 144 Sorry, i mean 144 then 54 and then we have 72. They don't add up to 180. Sure. No, it should be 360, not 180. The circle is 360. No, I mean 360, sorry. They do. They add up. They add up. Can we add it together? Huh? Yes. Yes. 90 plus. Okay, let's start 144 plus 90, plus 72, plus 54. Uh-huh. Is this what you're saying? So oh, can we yes. add it together? Hey, this plus this is zero. So do you carry on and so on? So that's how you come up with this. It will be 360. Oh, it will be 360. Okay. All right, let's come to a close of all this. Okay, Mr. Charles, we are done. Uh, Mr. Charles Soto, uh, okay, Mr. Charles Soto is off. Okay, so um, dear members, I think we can stop here for now because of time. Uh, please, uh, you, we, are, um, we are going to share with you, uh, let me share with you the, the link where you'll be able to access the, the other one. It is called, okay, let me share with you the link briefly and then, you can be able to access the, the, the work. Eh? Those of you who are not in the Google Classroom, and those of you who have not uh, been able to get the assignments, you can be able to access them there, okay? So, uh, okay, I've shared that link there. You will see the, the various links that will be there. And uh, let me share with you some of the screen here, those of you who are there. I hope we can be able to see this. The lesson is done. So when you click on that link that I've given you, when you click on the link that I've given you, this is where you're going to get. So when you reach here, scroll down, the timetable is there. Uh, this is the Zoom, but the, our major concern is the Google Classroom. Eh? So you go to this part here, look for your class. Okay, your class is senior one. So you come to this class here. When you click here, it will take you directly to the Google Classroom and you'll be there, okay? So try to do that as you are in there. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Let's meet to, to the next, let's meet in the next class. As I'm going to post these notes there, so don't worry about uh, everything. I wish you well. <laughs>